Hey there everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com and I uh, want to show you a setup video here. We're going to be working on the uh, 80 millimeter dual shaft watertight cylinder uh, that we offer here at the Dry Docks, manufactured by r r out of the UK. Customer commissioned us to uh, just get the cylinder all set up, so I figured I would make a video, show you guys how we went about it. Uh, not that that's the only way of going about it, but um, how we're going to. It's going to be including a pitch controller, fail safe, uh, and a bow servo for the forward dive planes. We'll be going into an arc model type 7 eventually. So hey, let's get started. So before we dive into this, let's uh, have an overview. This is the cylinder as you would get it. Uh, ignore all of this because this is like extra. Um, it's got these uh, mini servos that handle your rear dive planes and rudders. Got an on-off switch here uh, that turns the whole thing on and off. Here's your pump uh, intake for the ballast system. Uh, ballast tank and uh, a battery tray and I've got a uh, lithium polymer battery in here these uh, 3300 milliamp lipos fit just perfectly into that equipment tray that is not included as well by the way um, cast end caps uh, we're gonna have to do some modifications to these it uses uh, silicone o-rings which are nice and easy to get on and off from the tube, but uh, the whole thing comes out in one piece, which is actually kind of slick. Uh, I, I kind of like that whole idea. Um, so what we're going to be doing here right now, we're going to start uh, connecting our linkages, uh, installing our electronic speed controllers. And these are the ones that I would recommend to power the motors and the pump Viper Marine 10 mini ESCs. And then uh, battery link and the pitch controller, and uh, this will be our forward servo. So let's get started. All right, progress thus far. Uh, I've installed the uh, two pitch controllers right here, adhered them to the deck. I'm gonna label these pump and motors for uh, future reference. The linkages uh, have been completed. I want you to note the uh, the bend that I put on those linkage rods. You want to make sure that this exits as linear a fashion, uh, you know, parallel to the center line of the cylinder uh, as possible. Now, the uh, the thing about this, and I'll show this to you as I move that servo. Um, this swings you know, quite a bit. So this uh, particular setup is actually pretty good. He's got a lot of, of slop uh, on the inside and these bellows seals um, work really well. But if you're using a more, uh, you know, high tech, high performance seal, that alignment is really important and that swing becomes problematic, which is why we use linear servos on our 300 series sub drivers. But this works uh, quite well. There's no binding or anything uh, like that. Um, not knowing what the customer setup is or how much, you know, throw he needs, I, I elected to go on the outside there to give him the maximum amount. Now, the next thing I need to do is run some servo extension cables. Now, we have servo extensions that are re required for each of the two servos and each of the two speed controllers, and we need to get power up here. So that's basically four servo cables uh, a positive and a negative wire. Now, uh, there is a nice big acrylic tube down the center, the conduit, that's gonna go to the battery compartment at the back, and that's also where the receiver, I believe, is supposed to be mounted. And that will isolate it from the uh, inter any interference from the motors in the forward part of the uh, compartment there. Um, the challenge is gonna be getting these cables through. Now, we need to with these extensions, uh, get it through. And, and unfortunately, because of the way the deck is, it can't get it in here. So it's gotta go through here and that access is a little bit limited. Um, so that's gonna be a bit of a challenge. I'm gonna try and stuff that all through and then we'll have all of our servo extensions and then I'll have to try and force a cable through. So let's see what we can do.
All right, one thing that this cylinder does not have that's actually kind of a big deal is a forward servo for the forward dive planes. It's got two aft, one for the, the rear dive planes and one for the rudder. Um, but that means actually you, need, you would need to forego forward dive planes or run additional linkages from the back all the way to the front to connect dive planes. So not ideal. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've installed a servo in the forward uh, battery compartment bulkhead, and uh, that's going to make things a lot easier for connection for those four dive planes. So let's take a look at that. So this is the uh, solution I came up with. Um, this is just a standard uh, micro servo. What I did is I marked where the forward battery tray lip meets up with that bulkhead so that it's not going to interfere with it and um, mounted it in there. Um, if this were ever to fail, you could just literally break it off and, and mount a new one in there. It'd be really easy to do. Uh, and then what I did, you can see on the inside there, there's a piece of quarter inch brass tube. It goes all the way through the bulkhead and uh, put a bellow seal on the front. Um, I milled out this uh, bulkhead, this resin bulkhead with my milling machine. You could do the same thing with a Dremel, you know, like a rotary tool. Um, but I'm just taking advantage of the sh tools that I have at the shop here. Um, but this works really good. Um, let's see if I can, if I can do this. Um, so if you, uh, take a, a look at that linkage, it's got full throw and there's enough slop in that quarter inch tube that, uh, it takes into account that variation uh, in horizontal displacement as this servo horn goes through its arc. So that means it's like a little wiggly on the outside, but that's not going to matter once you connect it to your bow plane linkages because all of the force is going to be linear uh, and not uh, horizontal or transverse there. So that is my solution for the forward um, servo in the uh, watertight cylinder. Uh, again, you know, the, the 300 series sub drivers that we offer come complete with two forward servos already installed and tested. Uh, this is just a little bit of a workaround if you wanted to go the cheaper route uh, with the R and R cylinder. All right, I wanna show you um, how these seals work in the back. So if you take a look here, this is the, the drive shaft and this is the, uh, the seal. I've got the, uh, the other side off, which is actually the starboard side, but even though it's upside down. But if you look inside there, you can see that's a silicone O-ring and uh, it slips over the shaft. And then as you tighten this down, it compresses that O-ring seal and creates your, uh, your seal. So that's adjustable. Now, uh, the thing that we have discovered, however, is that uh, as that motor spins, particularly obviously if it's in the counterclockwise direction, um, it can want to spin this off, which is, as you can imagine, not the best of situations. And so I think what we're going to do, we're just going to put a drop of, of CA on here to lock it down once we get the correct um, tension on that seal. So just something to watch when you're assembling your cylinder. Um, also going to talk about the wiring here. So we checked both of these motors are mounted in the same orientation. So the positive terminals are both on the side that's closest to me. So uh, here and here. When you wire these together, you want them to spin counter to each other. So you'll go positive to the negative and negative to the positive and then shoot out to your electronic speed controller. If you wire them the same, if you connect the both positive terminals, then both shafts will spin the same direction and uh, you would have to put two of the same propellers on your boat rather than opposed and it would be weird. So just watch that when you do up your wiring. All right, we're done. Um, all in all, it wasn't too bad with the two of us kind of picking at it. It took, I think we guessed about two hours to set everything up. Uh, so if you're looking at three hours by yourself, that's probably pretty realistic. And obviously we've got other stuff we're doing kind of in the meantime. 
I want to show you the setup, uh, front to back. So uh, if you want, you can emulate it. But like I said, there's absolutely more than one way to skin a cat. This is not the be all and end all. But if you want to use it as an example, let's do it. All right, let's start at the front here. I'll take a closer look. So uh, tucked in here, <clears throat> we've got our battery. This is a 3300 milliamp lithium polymer battery. It goes in there. We notched this a little bit just so that this cable will lay a little bit more flat. So I'm going to go ahead connect that here. Um, now, if you take a look, this wire protrudes from the front about uh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, and that means that the end cap doesn't sit flush. And so I uh, milled this out uh, so that it will fit. Now, obviously you could get away with a smaller battery and you wouldn't have to do all this extra work. This is a nice size battery though. Um, and if you see now when I put this on, it sits perfectly flush. So there's no gap uh, in there. So um, power comes in, goes through a uh, uh, 15 amp fuse, and then back to the back of the cylinder through this on off switch. It's currently off right now and to turn it on, you just click it and away you go. I've got no receiver in here right now. So um, obviously you can't see, um, you know, all these other things going, but we're going to go one by one. This is the um, rear dive plane linkage. Showed that to you earlier, going forward and backward. But we installed a, a pitch controller. So as we move this cylinder back and forth, you can see it shifting in there. Um, if we switch our channels to this one, This is our pump, forward and back, for the ballast system. And um, that is uh, run through, this power is run through the uh, BLM, the, the battery and link monitor. So in the case of low voltage or loss of signal, you can program this to blow ballast. That's a great unit to, uh, to have. Oh, and it's going into fail-safe mode right now. There you go. Uh, let's see what else we got here. This is our rudder linkage. There's our throttle. And you'll note that those shafts are spinning opposed to one another, counterclockwise uh, and clockwise, respectively. So <clears throat> let's move uh, into the front here. I'm gonna turn this off and just show you how we put everything in here. Two speed controllers uh, labeled motor and pump. We've got the uh, BLM. Now the BLM needs power as do the two speed controllers. So these are all spliced together, getting power from the main switch. So the power comes through the conduit into the switch out of the switch and into here. And of course, at the very, very front of that circuit, as we showed you earlier, was the fuse uh, in case there is issue. Um, your rudder and rear dive plane servos are there. And then if we spin things over, um, basically there's not a lot to see down here other than the fact you've got uh, nicely bundled cables, your main water pump right there, um, and then the wiring for the motors. So all in all, Really simple, um, beautiful watertight cylinder. Um, this one is set up for the Arc Model Type 7, but it'll work in obviously any boat that uh, has dual shafts and uh, needs the approximate displacement that this cylinder offers. So, hope this is helpful for anybody who is uh, either building your own cylinder or setting up the R&R &R watertight cylinder. Um, if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you, Bob at NautilusDryDocs.com. Hit me up anytime. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thanks for joining me. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocs.com. Catch you next time.